still here, Lydia. I thought I made myself clear. It's you or your father's farm. Seems like a big sacrifice just to stay in Berkeley Square. so well. Job in London, nice clean uniform, good wage. I haven't dismissed you. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a nanny. This is about a certain young gentleman, isn't it? I'm going to hand him my notice. I've decided. I've got to go. But you're a very good nanny. Ask Nanny Collins. She thinks the world of you. She'll be on your side. You'll see. You want to keep your position, don't you? Of course I do. Well then, what have you got to lose? Nanny! It's nine o'clock! All right. I'll give it a try. Good morning, They'll be here before you know it. The new sewage pipes. You never read your notice, did you? Morning, Ivy. Morning. Morning. How's a boy? He keeps being sick. Still in a state of bad death, is he? Thinks he's going straight to hell. And Nanny? What does she think? She thinks that sometimes people do wrong things. But they don't mean to. Gotta go. A lot of master calls. About time. Sorry, sir. Get held up in the kitchen. The housemaid found this. In the hall. In the hall? On the floor. Good God. Lucky she's thoroughly with a mop, sir. Yes, thank you, Edward. Looks valuable, sir. Yes, it is. Not my house. Yeah. I, I didn't get no notice. No notice, no work. You go and dig somewhere else. You'll have to take it up with the town hall, love. This is private. This is private property. She's got all her washing out. Then she'll have to take it in there, won't she? All right, boys. We'll clean it off. Clean it off now. Why don't you go out, Mrs B? Come back when it's all over. It's not so upsetting if you don't actually see them doing it. What about that friend of yours? What friend of mine? The one with the baby. You go up Barclay Square for a couple of hours. It'll be done by then. Oh, Tom, it was an accident. Father oh, hates me. Nonsense. I shot him. And you're sorry, aren't you? Look, he's your father. He'll forgive you. He loves you. Five minutes and it will all be over. I'm not worrying for nothing. Please give this to Beatrice, would you, Edward? Nanny and Master Tom are waiting outside to speak to you, sir. No, it's not convenient. Tell Nanny I will decide when to speak to Tom. Really, Arnold, you're being a little overdramatic. I dropped it. It's been found. Is there really any cause for an inquisition? You lose a precious bracelet given to mark our anniversary and you don't even notice it's missing. I refuse to listen to this. As if the last few weeks haven't been difficult enough! Mama? Not now, Tom! Hey. 
just went home. Should we go and fetch our together? No. You could come with me and help me polish my best boots. Tom? Yeah, I'd probably best leave Mama's arm for a while. I'll have to. I've got to go fetch Harriet. What, do you want me to go after him? No. You're right. Let him be. You're going to let me be as well? Ned. I can't talk now. Harriet's waiting. I can meet you. Please. I'll be in the square with Harriet, by the flower garden. Hello. Hello. Have you got a moment? Really? I've got to take Harriet back for a lunch. I'm not ashamed, Maddie. I love my baby. I haven't set eyes on this book for years. Nanny Collins, can I ask you something? Mm hmm If you was young, and if a young man, if a certain young man... I'll spit it out, Lydia. If I was to tell you that someone... that he was like, um... Making advances. It's Lord Hugh. Master Hugh? Oh, I don't think so. You're misunderstanding his lordship's position, Lydia. Master Hugh is a friendly young man. He always was. I'm not talking about friendly. Oh, you young girls, you tell each other too many silly stories. I loved William, Matty. And he loved me. Yeah. But I still don't see how you could... ..you know. When you feel like that... ..when... ..you can't breathe for thinking of someone... ..when they touch you and you go weak, you... ..you can't resist. You you don't want to resist. No. The rest of the world just fades away. All thoughts of decency and proper behaviour. The right and Christian thing to do. It all just goes. I wanted to save myself for my wedding night. Just like you. Just like every girl. But there wasn't going to be a wedding night, was there? No. Not you and a Viscount. Not a Viscount to me. Just the man I wanted to be with. The father of my baby. I'm so sorry, Anna. It must have been so awful for you when he... You know, when he died. I just want you to understand. When, um, when you love someone and you have their child and that child is in danger, nothing else matters. All that matters is protecting your baby. How can I make you understand? You don't have to. You're my friend and you did what you thought was best. And I should stand by you. Thank you. Ned's here to fetch us. I'll go and get my coat. Handsome chap. Not surprising he's so popular with the ladies. I don't think he's like that. Oh, I saw my canoodling only the other day. He doesn't canoodle. 
Asking about the girl hanging off his arm a few days ago now. Oh, they were canoodling all right. In Mount Street, broad daylight. Ned, I knew it was you. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Me favourite lady. It's my lucky day. I'm too young to be your favourite lady. And anyway, my mother says I've got to marry a prince or a lord at the very least. You in a rush? Come on, hurry up. It's lunchtime. Matty? Run on to the next gate. So, it's me today, is it? It's you every day. That's not what I hear. A girl hanging off your arm in Mount Street, that's what I hear. You gonna deny it? I can't deny it. But I want to explain it. No. It'll be like when you explain the other thing. What you did. I don't want to hear anything else, because you make me believe you. And then I won't know where I am. Come in. Ah, oh, Lydia. Is this about the letter? So? The letter home. I said I'd help you, didn't I? Thing is... Oh, well, now's as good a time as any. Thing is, I want to hand in my notice. So there's, um, no point in a letter, is there? I see. Is it because you're homesick? No, Mr Fowler. It's something else entirely. I'll be going in the morning if that's agreeable. Lydia? I'd best be getting back. Good morning, sir. Once the pipe's through, you won't see no difference. A little patch of concrete, a manhole cover in the corner, it'll be like it never happened. Yeah, well, there wasn't nothing wrong with them old pipes. Oi, Bill! I'm going to run it along here. Has she, Nanny? I'm sorry, Bertie. I've neglected you. I'm sure Miss Isabel's been very busy, Bertie. Indeed. All these end-of-season parties and entertaining. Captain Mason is coming for tea. Isabel, will you play with me? Since Nanny seems to prefer to gaze at baby Charles instead of offering me helpful advice, I think I might. What kind of advice are you after, Miss Isabel? Well, for once in this desperately dull season, tea could be exciting. Or it would be were it not for an elderly person with a determination to do things by the book. Ah. Oh, you can't help me, Hannah, I suppose. A drop of arsenic in someone's teacup. <laughs> Rat poison in the scones. <laughs> if this were a novel, there'd be a brilliant solution. Well, I was thinking of something a little less drastic. Oh? I was thinking of a certain person's taste for an aperitif before dining. I'm not sure I catch your drift. Madeira? It's an island near Spain. I Miss Turner said it was a drink. Precisely. A rather powerful drink if partaken enthusiastically, or so I'm told. <laughs> well? I want to offer my sincerest apologies, Father. About the incident in Devon. Come. The shooting party business. You were quite right. I had no business changing the St. John boys' cartridges. A most stupid and thoughtless act. Thank you, Fowler. If you move those papers on the table, though. I behave like a complete ass. We've put the matter behind us now, Hugh. We'll say no more about it. Thank you. Um, anything I can help you with? Oh, just the usual problems with the estate. Trying to close the gap between income and expenditure. Ah, oh, well, I've been having some thoughts about that. May I? By all means. Fowler, you'd better bring another cup. Yes, my lord. What you told me, you had no need to learn the dull details of estate management. It seems I've been wrong on more than one count recently. 
I've been looking at the figures for the Western farm. Have you? Remember all that grain we lost last year? Well, it struck me that if you closed that particular farm down and converted the buildings into barns, you could use them to store the grain from the West Fields. And what do you propose we do with the Western family? With respect, Father, that's their affair, not ours. And in that precious moment, Florence knew her life would be changed forever. You and Annie getting on all right? I suppose so. What about Ned? What do you mean? Ned and Nanny, are they getting on all right? Where are you going? Out. His nibs is lying down, resting his wounds, so he don't want to be disturbed. So what's keeping me here? He held her in his arms and murmured to her that he had been desperate for this moment. Excuse me, cook. Bring a West home. Don't know. Not in the nursery. I know that. What, you haven't seen him at all? He's in a sulk. Hmm. He's a boy, isn't he? Always in a sulk about something. I should know. Well, uh, if he comes down to the kitchen, please let me know, Mrs McCluskey. And from that moment, he would never leave her side. Nanny, I wanted to talk to you. Get things straight about Ned. You needn't worry. Tom's gone missing. And pretty soon, I'm going to have to tell his mother and father. You think I'm bothered about Ned? He's not a murderer. Listen. Who he really is, what he did, why. I just don't care, all right? Nanny, can you help? My aunt has rather a severe headache. I confess I do feel somewhat giddy. Perhaps the Madeira was off. Oh, well, could you just take her other arm? <laughs> must have sat too close to the fire. You really must lie down, Aunt. It's the best thing for a headache. I'll call for some powders. But Captain Mason is coming to tea. Get a quiet doze in a darkened room and you'll feel a hundred times better. Isn't that right, Nanny? The boy is absolutely set on humiliating me yet again. He was anxious about facing you, sir. Well, running away never solved anything. It really is too tiresome. I'll take a turn on the square, see if he's outside. The boy is out of control, there's no question. Bring him to me the moment you find him. Travels. Boy. Oh, in God's name, she thinks if you're hiding in the cold storage beyond me. What's going on? Tom. Can't find him. Good good. Search the whole of the nursery floor again. His blanket's missing. That's it then. He's run away. Time to call in the police. We don't want to do that. Why not? Have she been kidnapped? It's all my fault. I told him his father would forgive him. I told him it would all be all right. Uh, I think I know where he might be. Where? I'll show you. Just tell me. Look, do you want to find him or not? Captain Mason. Mrs. Sinjin. What a pleasant surprise. You haven't seen my son, have you? He seems to have gone wandering off. What are you doing here? I'm visiting someone. I see. Victoria. Might I ask who you're visiting? Mrs. Saunders. You know her? Yes, Captain Mason, of course I do. And I know her niece, Miss Hutchinson. Look, Victoria, you're married to St. John. And me? Well, I shall have to find a wife someday, shan't I? 
in life. In name only, my sweet. What we had. Nothing can replace that. Nothing. I must go. Charmed to have met you, Mrs. St. John. And looking so beautiful. I shall keep an eye out for young Tom. Have a pleasant afternoon. There's nowhere left to look, is there? Besides, he's been up here before. Watch your head. Well, I don't see him. This way. Captain Mason, how very punctual you are. The anticipation of a pleasant afternoon, Miss Hutchinson. Not quite as pleasant as you might have hoped. I'm afraid my great aunt will be unable to join us for tea. I'm very sorry to hear it. She suffers from headaches. In which case, it's doubly good of you to entertain me alone. Most trying for you. Um, do sit down, Captain Mason. I wonder, uh, given the unusual nature of our meeting, if we might not be a little courageous this afternoon and dispense with certain formalities, Miss Hutchinson? Oh, how very daring, Captain Mason. Um, what exactly did you have in mind? Well, I thought we might start by you calling me Harry. This is silly. You can't stay up here all day. Why don't we all go back downstairs? Cook's made gingerbread, men. Come on, Tom. The longer you stay up here, the more... I was scared of me, old man, too. He was, uh, a bit quick with the belt. He beat you? One time he hit me so hard I pass out clean. Cracked me head in the kitchen table. The thing is, I always knew when the beating was coming. Because I knew the exact moment he was going to undo that buckle and take a swing. What about you? Me? How do you know when your dad's going to take the stretcher? He doesn't. Doesn't? What? Never? So, what's going to happen to you down there? When you face your father, what's he going to do? Tell me off. Ah. Oh. Shout at me. And that's it? Is that right, Annie? Yeah. Of course it is. When he's telling you off, just remember me in that belt, eh? You know what they say. Sticks and stones. Come on. It was very nice of you to invite me, Mr. Powler. The cake's delicious. Please pass on my compliments to cook. And how is young Master Ivo? No teeth are coming through. Oh, but, but I'm not too troubled. Lydia's dealing with the knights. It's a pity, then, that she's decided to leave. I beg your pardon? She came to me this morning, said she's unhappy. I thought you might be able to shed some light. If you're meaning that I'm the culprit, Mr Fowler, I can safely say that Lydia and I have ironed out our differences. A young man, then? Bearing in mind the conversation we had some weeks ago, Mrs Collins. 
Master Hugh probably smiled at her once too often. You know what these young girls are like. She did say something to me this morning. I, I told her not to be so silly. You think she's making it up? I suppose I could have a word with Master Hugh. Tell him she's an impressionable young girl and he shouldn't encourage her. What if I told you that Master Hugh is taking a less than healthy interest in the entire Western family? Above and beyond the duties of Lord of the Manor. Less than healthy? An interest that involves evicting Lydia's family from their farm in Devon. Would you still think this was all in her imagination? I always think the way one pours tea says so much about a person. In what way? Well, if I were to tell you before you'd finished the procedure, you might adjust your actions accordingly. <laughs> How utterly terrifying. So here I am, innocently pouring tea, and you're assessing my character on the basis of the way I hold the teapot. <coughs> here, take this before I reveal something alarming. <laughs> there is nothing you could reveal to me would not confirm my opinion of you as the most charming girl I've ever met. <laughs> Captain Mason. Uh, Harry. The most charming, the most beautiful, the most delightful. Harry. Yes. Let's not waste this opportunity with misunderstanding. This ring was my mother's. I've carried it with me since her death. Now I'd like you to do me the very great honor of wearing it. And to do me the even greater honor of consenting to be my wife. Isabel? It fits. Why? Stand up straight, look him right in the eye, and say sorry. A gentleman. And he'll be angry, and that's all. That's all. I promise. Where is he now? Seeing his father. Thank God he wasn't kidnapped. Would have had police all over the house. <laughs> Last thing I know he did. Yes, Pringle? I've come to fetch the, the gingerbread men for young madam. So, do you have any explanation for your behavior today? Or for my injury? Am I to hear any kind of apology? I'm very sorry, Father. I accept your apology. It only remains for me to tell you to pack your bags at once. You're going to school, Tom. To the prep school at Tadmere Hall. Your father's already spoken to his old housemaster and he's agreed to take you a year early. Since Nanny seems unable to control you, we feel you need the discipline of school. The company of other boys. Teach you to be honorable. You'll catch the train first thing tomorrow and use the journey to reflect on the proper way to behave. Very well, Tom. You may go. Lydia is homesick, but unhappy. Call it what you will. She's very low, sir. She handed in her notice this morning. I see. And you think I may be able to help? Well, forgive me, but I rather feel this is the province of my wife. I'm afraid it's connected with another person. Another person? Yes, sir. A relative? No, sir. Good Lord, is this a guessing game? We'll be here all afternoon at this rate. The person involved is connected with you, Master George. Connect... Connected? Yes, sir. Now, let us be completely clear about this. It 
It's Master Hugh, sir. Yes, I see. Well, you haven't drunk your tea, Nanny. The girl has promise. And baby Ivor has taken to her very keenly. Leave it with me, Nanny. Now you consider the matter dealt with. I'm so disappointed in him, sir. Of course you are, Nanny. Of course you are. Anything interesting? It's a dinner invitation from the Mansfields. We won't go, of course. I'll write a note. I'm sure I'll be able to manage. I'm sorry, Arnold, but I have no intention of going to the Mansfields. I can't help thinking it might be time to get out and about. See people. Get back into the swing of things. Swing of things. Victoria. I know we've dealt with Tom, but I've been thinking. You think I was too harsh? Or perhaps we should have another word with him. Go up after tea. Victoria! Oh. Harry, you should be ashamed. Ashamed? Kissing my own fiancé? Why? I want to shout it from the rooftops. All in good time. with my knees. Oh, what are you doing here? I've got to pick your bags now. Get out of this place. Why? They know about the baby. Uh, Billy's still got the dimple every time he smiles. Uh, what do you want, Flory? Shall I do that bit of washing, Nanny? Later. As you can see, I have a visitor, so please go downstairs for half an hour. Thank you. Yes, miss. His name's Charlie. Very smart. You've got your own servant now. She's not my servant, Mrs. B. Can I hold you? Just for a moment. How do they know? You said you'd take care of it. A bit close to home is all. You said it'd be all right. Stupid. I buried the baby in my backyard. They're digging there now. Father! Paula said you wanted to see me. What in God's name have you been up to with the Western girl, Hugh? The Western girl? Lydia. Absolutely nothing. Why on earth do you ask? Hugh, this is a time for honesty. Father, I swear to you. No, above all, Hugh, do not swear. Now, I have had a report from a completely reliable source that something is amiss, that the problem resides in the nursery and that the cause of the problem is you. I've never heard now, as such... as far as I'm concerned, these facts are not up for debate. What I want from you, for once in your life, is an honest admission of guilt. Well, I'm waiting, Hugh. Most certainly not. How dare you take the word of some skivvy against that of your own son? No, this time you will not hide behind your injured pride. Let go of my arm! To feign an interest in Corston affairs. To attempt to evict one of my tenants. Because his daughter refuses to succumb to your attention. I said let go! I am ashamed. Deeply ashamed. You were not brought up to be a coward and a seducer. Now listen to me, Father. No, you listen to me. I want you to promise me that you will never set one foot in the nursery again. I want your word as a gentleman. If you are a gentleman that I shall never have to speak of this matter again. Father. Your word, Hugh. You take the word of some disturbed and pathetic creature. This is your last chance. Very well. Say it. Father, Say it. Very well. 
I give you my word. Thank you. You may go. I can't leave. Do you have a choice? That woman next door, she knows all about you. Well, I can't leave without Billy. So you take him. All right, no fancy clothes like here. But he'll be happy. He'll be with his mother. Oh, the backyard, Mrs. Bronowski. I thought we were safe. But if I run away with Billy, I think I'd kidnap their baby. So I'll have to go back then. Make it all right. It won't be so difficult to have done worse. I'll go with you. No, no. He won't see his mother. It will be all right. Oh, oh Billy, you have a baby to think of. You don't think I'll leave you to face this alone? No, I, I can say, shh, Billy. That sounds like calling to me. Do you have any medicine? Oh, yeah, in the bedroom. you, did I? It's evidently a day for surprises. Sir? I was rather surprised just now when I was reprimanded for bothering you. I didn't think of you as a tattletale. Sir, I'll be on my way tomorrow. If you could see your way to leaving my family alone... After the trouble you've got me into. Why should I perform any favours for you? Perhaps you'd rather perform a favour for me. I'd be obliged if you left Lydia alone to do her work. She has neither the time nor the inclination to chat to every Tom, Dick or Harry who wants to bother her. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. You always did understand me, Master Hugh. We'll say good night then. Must get on. Suffice it to say, there are people here who think more of you than you'd credit, so we'll have no more talk of leaving. Nanny Collins. All those curtains closed. Let's go round and do them all again, properly this time. Then you have to go to school anyway, Tom. Might as well be now as in a year. And you need some discipline. Today's performance only underlined that fact. Regard school as an adventure, and you'll survive it well enough a couple of terms under Mr. Hedge, and you'll have forgotten all about home. Certainly worked for me. Old Hedgehog will see you through. School's not so bad. A bit lonely at first, but... Now, will you shake hands with your father? Not so bad, old chap. Not so bad. October the 12th, 1902. Dear mother and father, I am writing to you with the help of Mr. Fowler, the butler, to let you know that I am keeping very well. The weather has been fine for the time of year, and autumn is not yet upon us. Autumn is not yet upon us. Tomorrow, I shall walk in the park with baby Ivo. Victoria. Something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I simply wanted some help with this. I don't see how... I just wanted you to make sure that the clasp was secure. Seems safe enough to me. Good. I should hate to lose it again. Good 
Shall we go into dinner? Water might find you up here. Careful. Just go away, will ya? Looks nice like that. Looks a mess. Everything's a mess. Tom's been sent away and it's my fault. Matty. I came up here for a bit of peace and quiet. You go over the edge and it's eternal peace you'll get. And if that happened, I don't know what I'd do. But what do I say if Miss Isabel comes in? Oh, I don't know anything. Look, I've got to go. I'll be too late. Hannah? I was in no danger of falling. That's what I always said, see? No danger of falling, me. Because I thought it would hurt. Will you stop it? Go away. No. Do this to me, Ned, please. What? Catch you unawares? Look at you when you're not being nanny. Well, you only show me what you want me to see. So kindly allow me the same. What's that supposed to mean? It's not difficult. You show me the Ned you want me to see. But you're not what you seem, are you? Ned McCluskey. I don't know who he is. Do you think he's a killer? What then? How should I know who you are? Since you never explain anything. You may tell other women your secrets. I haven't had that honour. Ah, so that's what this is about. Yes, that's what it's about. Now do what you please. But don't expect me to trust you ever again. Tell you what. I'll go on believing in you. What? You don't have to return the favour. All right. I took another woman out like I've done since I was 15. You don't talk. Not proper talking. You've a drink, a laugh, easy. But suddenly everything you always had ain't good enough. Because you've seen something else. And nothing can ever be the same again. I love you. And that's scary, Matty. It's a lot scarier than being seen with your head, then. Please come down from there. You can do it you like now. Go to the police. I won't go to the police. No? Why not? Please, just come down from there. Not until you tell me why not. Because I love you. Say it louder. And smile when you say it. Because I love you, all right? Come on. Come and have a look. You can see halfway across London. Don't worry, I'll hold you. You're wanted upstairs. Miss Harriet was looking for you. I was just on my way.
Your trunk's packed. Did you want to take that book with you to read on the train? I'll miss you. Tom. I'm sorry if you think I let you down today. Do I get a kiss? I'll see you in the morning then. Put this in the bed, shall I? You should make the most of it. There's no warm sheets with your gown. She didn't think of that. If you mean Nanny, I don't want to mention in this room. Quite right, too. You up here with your troubles and her down there. Her down there what? Never you mind. You don't like Nanny, do you? Neither do I. I know a few or two that might put a spanner in the works of her ladyship. What kind of thing? Never you mind. I like you, though. And Cook. And Ned. I know a few or two about him and all. You mean about him hiding in the storeroom before he was our footman? He told me that was a secret. Hide it. You won't tell anyone, will you? I promised on my honour. I won't tell you anything else. And if anyone asks, I'll say you made it up. Right then. Not a word.